What to photograph in October 2023? Hello, photo builder Rafael the Bar here. In October, we have lots and lots of cool events to photograph. Four conjunctions of the Moon with the planets, with Jupiter, Venus, Saturn, and Jupiter again. An annular solar eclipse, which is a unique opportunity to photograph the ring of fire around the Moon. Actually, we put together a Philippines expedition to the US to photograph the annual solar eclipse, and I can't wait to go there and show you the final photos. We also have the crescent moon around new moon, the zodiacal light, and yes, October is a great month to photograph the zodiacal light, Aurora Borealis, the northern lights, the Milky Way and the Galactic Center, the Orionids meteor shower, Venus will be at its greatest western elongation, giving us a great opportunity to view and photograph the planet. We'll also have a partial lunar eclipse and the full moon, of course. And as always, don't forget the always on for opportunities looking about the sunrises and sunsets, star trails. Also, at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you some of the best photos that you guys have submitted to the Photobills Awards and that we featured in September. So let your imagination fly, decide why you want to photograph and use Photobills to plan a cool photo. So you can go and capture it. Okay, let's get started. Let's see some of the best photo opportunities that can be captured in October 2023. Let's go. In October, we'll have four conjunctions of the Moon with the planets. On October 2nd, Jupiter will be pretty close to a pretty large Moon. The Moon phase will be 91%. On October 10th, the Moon will be in conjunction with Venus. And the Moon phase will be 18%. Pretty thin. On October 24th, uh, Saturn will be pretty close to the Moon. And the Moon phase will be 70%. And on October 29th, Jupiter again will be in conjunction with the Moon. And the Moon will be full, almost full. Moon phase will be 99%. On both hemispheres, you'll find the Moon planet conjunctions where the Moon is. So all you have to do is to set the date with photo pills and then swipe the time until you see the thin blue line moving on the map, that's the position of the moon, and then you'll see the moon planning conjunctions at moonrise and moonset. Go for them, you can miss them. On October 14th, during the new moon, there will be an annual solar eclipse. And if you wish to photograph the characteristic ring of fire around the moon, you have to be, you need to be within the path of totality, which is this great band where I have the red pin here, uh, that's the place you need to be to photograph the ring of fire around the moon. And as you see, the path of totality crosses the United States, Mexico, and Central America, and ends in Brazil. Also, on the top panel, you have the time of each uh, phase of the eclipse. The partial phase of the eclipse begins at 7.47. This is for the red pin position. And the annual eclipse, so the phase of the annual eclipse begins at 5.41. And the eclipse is maximum at 5.43. You know the exact time each phase of the eclipse will occur. And on the map, you have this blue line here that represents the position of the sun and the moon, so the position of the eclipse. And as you see, as I drag the time bar, this moon, the moon and the eclipse moves, you have the updated phase of the eclipse. So you know the time each phase of the eclipse occurs, you know where the eclipse will occur with this blue line that's moving on the map. And also if you are on location and you are on the red pin position, you can tap on the AR button and visualize the position of the sun within the mental reality as you see, the eclipse is pretty high in the sky. Here you have the eclipse. Yeah, you want to align the eclipse. This eclipse is occurring very high in the sky. You want to align it. You need to really find the cliff or something. So you can put something on top of the cliff and shoot it. And for that, you need to really scout well your locations. But if you want to photograph just the face of the eclipse, it's enough if you are in the path of totality. Also, your side, the path of totality, and within these yellow lines, then you'll be able to photograph the partial phase of the eclipse, which is very cool too. And of course, if you're outside the eclipse, unfortunately in Spain is not visible, so outside these lines there is no eclipse, unfortunately. And well, if you're interested in learning more on how to plan the next annual solar eclipse, I'm telling you now that I'm going to be releasing a video on how to plan the annual solar eclipse step by step very, very soon. Subscribe! One of the days before and after the new moon are great days to photograph the crescent moon when it's super, super, when the moon is super thin and it has a phase between one and two percent. And of course, you can photograph it in October too. For instance, check out my plan here. I had the red pin in Menorca, and the goal is to photograph the crescent moon next to the Artruch lighthouse, a very beautiful 
I have that I have a Menorca, it's a pretty cool shot. And here you have the size of the moon in brackets. The top panel is uh, 2.3 meters, not very big because I'm very close to the uh, lighthouse, but I think it's big enough. And the natural light of this shot, the relation of the sun is minus 117 degrees. According to the top panel, this is golden hours, so it can be really, really beautiful. But this is my plan. If you want to learn how to plan your crescent moon shots, watch this video. As you know, the new moon is on October 14th, and around the new moon is a great time to photograph the zodiacal light in October. The zodiacal light is a reflection produced to the scattering of sunlight due to the moving particles across the entire solar system. It's a pretty cool phenomenon. At this time of the year, in the northern hemisphere, the zodiacal light is visible east before the astronomical twilight begins. Before dawn, in the sunrise direction, the thick yellow line you see on the map. On the contrary, on the southern hemisphere, you'll find the zodiacal light in the sunset direction, which is the direction of the thick yellow line you see on the map just after the astronomical twilight ends, when it's night time. Based on these two lines, it's super easy to plan your zodiacal light shots, no matter the hemisphere you are. The sun is in the period of solar maximum, which means that it will be more likely to enjoy see and photograph the northern lights. The solar maximum occurs on average every 11 years. So if you're looking off to live in Sweden, Finland, you know, Iceland, Faroe Islands, in October you have a great chance to see and photograph the, the northern lights when there are no clouds, of course. Actually, you can see them and photograph them from September till April. And we planned a few cool expeditions, vertical expeditions to Lofoten and Iceland to photograph them. And also to Canada, by the way, with Rachel Jones Ross. And you're lucky enough, you'll be able to photograph even the northern lights with the Milky Way, like you, Leo, did in this image. So when should you photograph the auroras? Well, you can photograph them in any clear sky night, in any moon phase where there is aurora activity. Around the moon is great, but if you have a bit of moon, it will help you definitely lead the foreground too. So having a bit of moon is also a good idea. And if you wish to learn how to plan to the very last detail and photograph the Aurora Borealis, well, watch this super masterclass by Rachel John Ross. It's excellent. Watch it. October is the last month you'll be able to see and photograph the galactic center. The last month of the year, of course. So let's take advantage of it. You know that in the northern hemisphere you'll get vertical compositions of the Milky Way, but in the southern hemisphere you can get it when it's low in the sky too, which is pretty cool. So for example, if you are in the northern hemisphere, like I am here in, with the in Menorca, next to the Punta Nati uh, lighthouse, you see that the Milky Way is completely vertical in front of the lighthouse, which is a beautiful shot. Let's set the panel, the second panel of the Milky Way, so you can see it, it's straight up. And if I tap on the 90R button, well, where are you, Milky Way? Completely vertical. Here we have her. Here it is. Very, very nice. Now, if I go to the southern hemisphere, if I put the pin in New Zealand, the South Island, next to White Papa Lighthouse, well, as you see, I have the Milky Way arching and very low in the sky above the lighthouse, which is a pretty cool shot, I think. Very, very nice. If I tap on the 90R, you'll see the... If you imagine that you are in the right position, you'll see the Milky Way core here and the Milky Way arching above... Oh, sorry. Above, over there and dying over there. I almost lost my iPhone. Ah, I love the views. And by the way, you wish to learn how to plan your Milky Way shots super fast. Why is this video? The audio needs me to show is speaking on the night that goes from October 21st to October 22nd. And the good news is that the moon will be pretty large but under the horizon when the activity happens. So it's a great year to photograph it. According to the top panel from the right position from Menorca, I'll have 80 meters per hour expected. And as you see on the map, you see the radiant of the meteor shower moving on the map, so you know where the radiant is at all time. And on the time bar, you have a gray area that shows you when the activity begins. So around midnight until before dawn is the gray, gray time to photograph the meteor shower. As you see, the moon will be below the horizon. Very cool. On October 23rd, Venus will be at its greatest western elongation, which means that the planet will be further away from the Sun, giving us great conditions to view and photograph it from both hemispheres. Venus will shine in the early morning skies with a magnitude of minus 
0.4, which means that it will be visible to the naked eye. Before down, you'll see the planet in the sunrise direction, which is the thick yellow line you see on the map, more or less near the sunrise direction. So you want to plan a shot, you know where to frame, where to look for the planet. The full moon is on October 28th, and depending on where you are on Earth, you'll be able to enjoy and photograph a partial lunar eclipse too. It's when the umbra, the strongest shadow of the Earth, partially covers the moon. Where will it be visible? Well, you have the visible area here marked on the map, so it's Asia, uh, Europe, Africa, here, then you have the, an area where the eclipse is visible around at moonrise, the area where the eclipse is not visible, unfortunately in the United States, not visible, and an area where the eclipse is visible at moonset. So we're going to plan a shot, all you have to do is to place the red pin in the desired shooting spot in an area where uh, the eclipse is visible. On the top panel you have the phases of the eclipse and the times of each phase, and when the eclipse is maximum you also have the shape of the eclipse on the top panel, and on the map you have the position of the moon for the selected time, this blue line that's moving show me the position of the moon and thus the position of the eclipse. Again, you can tap on the AR button to visualize how high in the sky the eclipse will be, or where the moon is, the eclipse will be there. And for those that won't be able to photograph the partial eclipse, well, you have the full moon. And you know that the full moon gives us great four opportunities. Be creative. And you wish to learn how to plan your photos of the full moon, watch this video. And now let's see some of those photos that you have submitted to the Focus Awards and that we featured in September. The first one is a fantastic photo of the Milky Way Arch from the top of Picos de Europa, Spain, photo by Ruben Vela. The second one is a photo of the supermoon aligned with the five towers of Madrid, Spain again, a photo by Antonio Arias. And the third one is a spectacular photo of the sun and a few violet flowers in the Swiss Alps, photo taken by Antonio Valente, amazing photos! And now you used to learn how to plan and photograph each one of the events I've shared with you in this video, I invite you to download and study very very well our super detailed astronomical events photography guide, I'm gonna leave a link in the description of this video and in the first comment below, download it! And as always, if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday in another video, and remember, I have the power to imagine, plan and shoot, Legendary photos. Bye.